everyone, Mike Scan here, lead pastor of Epic Life Church in Terrell, Texas. And this is our Three Minute Thursdays where we take three minutes and look at subjects and topics of the Bible. Now, before I get started on today's topic, don't forget to like this. Don't forget to subscribe so that you're aware. And there's a little bell right there. Click on that so that every time we come out with a new Three Minute Thursday, you will be notified. Now, today's topic is what about the bacon? Have you ever had to ask that question? Uh, I, there are, are the dietary laws found in Leviticus chapter 11, are they for Christians? Or were they just given to the Jewish people and actually are no effect today, right? I believe this is probably one of the greatest debates within the Christian movement that's related to food. It's the dietary laws. Should believers in Christ um, obey the dietary laws? In other words, what about the bacon, right? So let's read the passage first. It's found in Leviticus chapter 11, beginning in verse one. I'm reading from the complete Jewish Bible. It says, Adonai said to Moish, that's Moses and Aaron, tell the people of Israel, these are the living creatures which you may eat among all the land animals. Any that has a separate hoof, which is completely divided and choose the cud. These animals you may eat but you are not to eat those that only chew the cud or only have a separate hoof. Then you go on down to Leviticus 9, verse 10, nine, uh, chapter, nine, uh, verse, chapter 11, verses 9 and 10. Of all the things that live in the water, you may eat these. Anything in the water that has fins and scales, whether in the seas or in the rivers, these you may eat. But everything in the seas and rivers without both fins and scales of all the small water creatures and of all the living creatures in the water, it is a detestable thing for you. Most believers in Christ feel that this was only applied to the Jewish people and that when Christ came, those laws were done away with. But before I go any further, I wanna say that the foods listed in Leviticus are all food that are really not good for you. Even without the command to not eat of it, uh, before I ever knew this, I knew that eating pork was something that was unhealthy. Matter of fact, doctors will tell you, get away from pork. Um, and, and when I worked out, I decided to eat better. And one of the very first things that I cut out, and many people who are in athletics do, that is pork. But let's go into detail and look at what this really means. That may be one of the reasons, uh, that may be one of the reasons that God has said that we're not to eat of them because they're not good for us. However, let's look at why most Christians still eat what God has said not to. And it comes from a very misapplied scripture that's found in the book of Acts, chapter, nine, or chapter 10 and chapter 11. Let's read uh, just some of the parts of it because of our time. It was a dream that Peter had. Peter had got hungry and he went up on top of a roof to pray in his home. And as he was praying, a sheet came down from heaven and it had all these unclean animals on there, right? So now let's read verse 11 from chapter 10. He saw the heavens open and something like a great sheet came down, lowered by its four corners to the earth. In it were all sorts of four-footed animals and reptiles and birds of the air. A voice came to him, get up, Peter, kill and eat. Now what's crazy about this is this is gonna happen three times and puts Peter in this weird position of saying, wait a minute, this isn't what I've been taught because he's seeing all these unclean animals, right? Well then after the three times this vision, three men, which is very important to our story, came looking for him and asking him if he would come to the house of Cornelius. You can read that on your own. Cornelius was a Gentile. Jews were not allowed, watch this, very important. Jews were not allowed to eat with the Gentiles for it was considered to be unclean. Let's pick it up in verse 22. And they said, Cornelius a centurion, a righteous and God-fearing man, well spoken of, of all the Jewish people was directed by a holy angel to summon you to his house and to hear a message from you. See, Paul, uh, Peter was being led by the Spirit of God to go to a Gentile's house. Now, nowhere have you seen in this passage yet, or nor will you, about anything about breaking God's law to eat anything unclean. Look at the context of the passage. It's not about eating, it's about this guy named Cornelius wanting Peter to come to his home and teach him about the kingdom of God. This would have put Peter, if, if Peter would have went 
in his mind, he's thinking, man, this will put me out of the synagogue. This will put me out of my fellowship with other Jewish believers. It's, but here's the thing. This would have, uh, th uh, to not only eat with a Gentile, but to go into his home was unheard of and spoken against in the Talmud and the oral law. Now, how do we know this? How do we know that it was about Cornelius? Well, let's finish reading our text. Acts 10, 44 through 46. While Peter was still speaking these words, in other words, he's at Cornelius' house, he's sharing the, 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 the gospel message with Cornelius the Gentile. The Bible says here, the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, fell on those hearing the message. All the circumcised believers who came with Peter were astonished. Why? Because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even to the Gentiles, for they were hearing them speak in tongues and magnifying God. Nowhere in this passage is the context about eating clean or unclean. The Father used something that Peter could relate with. Unclean, the Talmud and the oral law forbid Jews to eat with the Gentiles. This was about reaching lost people, not about a ham sandwich that the kingdom of God, Yeshua, would come. This is the message of the gospel. In Acts 11, we see it confirmed. Peter begins to tell the apostles on this amazing event that had just took place. Now, look at verse 18 first of chapter 10, or chapter uh, 11. When they heard, they being the apostles, this they became very quiet and they glorified God saying, then even to the Gentiles, God has granted repentance leading to life. Now in closing, I wanna say a couple of quick things. Notice God uses two types of animals. These animals are the, what we consider predators and they're um, um, a scavengers. The animals that God lines up are those two areas. So when we see hogs or pigs or pork, man, those are scavengers. And when he talks about you can't eat the birds of the air, uh, predator, raptors, he's dealing with predators, right? Why? Because predators bring balance to the ecosystem that God has created on this earth. And scavengers, here's a crazy thought, they clean it up, right? Think of a hog, a hog will eat anything, and I mean anything, they'll even eat its young, right? And then the things in the sea, right? You think of catfish, one of my favorite meals that I had to give up, right? But catfish are scavengers, they're bottom dwellers, they're bottom feeders, they are scavengers, right? Sharks don't have any fins, what are they? They're predators. God knew that in order to have a balanced ecosystem, these two animals need to be left alone and not eaten, this is why God considers unclean. I know I've taken a little bit more than three minutes, but I love you. God bless you. Open your Bible, read it for yourself, study to show yourself approved, man. This is Pastor Mike, Three Minute Thursdays. We'll see you next time.